So we know that Newton came up with this idea that all masses exert forces on each other that he called the forces of gravity, and that that force is proportional to the two masses, the size of those masses, we could say mass 1 or mass 2, or mass A and mass B, and inversely proportional to the distance apart that those masses are. And the constant of proportionality, if you want to call it that, this big letter G, we also know that based on Cavendish's setup of his torsion balance, this can be calculated. So that torsion balance has been used to accurately calculate this constant G, which is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, and it has units of newtons times meters squared divided by kilograms squared. So let's first start by some thought experiments and some un making sure that we understand exactly what's going on with this law of universal gravitation. So the first thing I want to point out is, let's say we have two masses, and this one is going to be the green mass, and this one is going to be the red mass. They might be the same size, they might be different sizes. But first of all, we should realize that the radius, or the distance of separation, is the distance between the centers of those masses. It's not the distance merely between the surfaces of the masses, but between the centers of the masses. We also should know that the resulting force of gravity is a force that's acting on both masses. So this force of gravity and this force of gravity are both exactly the same. So it's not that there's more force resulting on the smaller mass or on the bigger mass. They're exactly the same. These are, according to Newton's third law, equal and opposite forces. We could call one of these forces the force that the red mass exerts on the green mass, and then the other one is the force that the green mass exerts on the red mass. Now I want to push our understanding by asking ourselves some questions. And the questions I want to ask are, what would happen to the force of gravity if we do some different things? So what's, let's say, what would happen if we would double one mass? How would that affect the force of interaction between the masses? So what I'm going to do, now this should be obvious enough to you, but as a technique for finding answers to questions like this, I'm going to here copy down the same blue formula I have above. And then I'm going to add whatever variable is changed. So one mass is doubled. So I'm going to say that m, or m2, turned into twice as big as m2. So this is the way I denote that m2 was doubled. And it doesn't matter which mass we chose to be doubled. I chose m2. Well, and then we're going to rearrange this equation so that we get our original equation back again. And you should see that this is exactly equal to the same thing as if we had a big 2 out the front and then g times m1 times m2 divided by r squared. Right? You should be able to see that this is the same thing, but now it's written in such a way that I can see that my original force of gravity, which is written in blue, is now doubled because it has to be times by that 2. So we could say that if you double one mass, the force of gravity is doubled. Notice that's only from doubling one mass. If we would double both masses, I would have two twos in my equation, and two times two would be four. I would quadruple my force of gravity if I doubled both masses. Okay, let's try another one. Let's ask ourselves what happens to the force of gravity if the radius, or the distance, is tripled. Well, then our good old formula for f of g is equal to g times m1 times m2 divided by not just r squared now, but we have 3r. Now, notice that our r turned into 3r, and that whole thing still has to be squared. So now if I want to pull that 3 out to the front, I have to first square it. So this would be like the same thing as g m1 m2 divided by 3 squared is 9, so this would be like 9r squared. So we've taken the 3 out of the brackets. And now if I would rewrite this again, I could turn that 9 on the bottom of my fraction into a 1 9th times, and then of course my good old formula again. So now it's clear that my good old formula has to be times by 1 9th, or divided by 9. So I can answer that f of g is divided by 9, or times by 1 9th. OK, what would happen if? one mass was halved, and the radius is halved. So my good old fg would turn into 
capital G, and one of my masses is halved, so I'd have one half of M1 times M2, the other one is still normal, and the radius is also halved, so it turns into one half of R, and that whole distance has to be squared. If we follow the same procedure, we're going to try to take those green numbers out to the front of our equation to see what the combined total would be. Well, I could start with bringing the top half out already, the one by, by my mass. So now I get 1 half times g m1 m2 divided by, and now I have to bring my 1 half out of the brackets. So it turns into a 1 quarter, because when you square 1 half, you get 1 quarter, and then r is squared. So now I need to bring it the rest of the way out, or combine it with the 1 half, I guess. And you might be familiar with the mathematical rule that dividing by a fraction, in this case the 1 quarter fraction, is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I actually have to do 1 half times 4. So I get 4 divided by 2, or that's the same thing as just plain 2, times g m1 m2 divided by r squared. So it looks like from this situation, my f of g overall is doubled. And just in case I combine too many steps together there, what I did was I took my green, I'll do it in a different color green here, my green 1 half, which was supposed to be then divided by 1 quarter. That's the same thing as 1 half times 4 over 1. And that's what gave me my 4 halves, which equals 2. So dividing by a fraction was the same as multiplying by a reciprocal. So the technique we use is, is to kind of take that number, that multiplying factor, and bring it out to the front and see what would happen to the overall force of gravity. OK, let's do a real example with numbers. Let's go back up to the top where we had our green mass and our red mass. Let's say our green mass was 3 kilograms, and our red mass is 5 kilograms. And the distance separating those two masses is going to be, oh, let's say, 7 meters. You might ask yourself, first of all, how do you know what the units are that you're going to like? Well, we know that g has the units of meters squared per kilogram squared. So if we stick with meters and kilograms, it's going to be our best bet for canceling out units with g. Otherwise, we should probably convert to those units. So now the force of gravity between these two masses, and again, it's a force acting on both masses, the same force, is equal to g, which is that fancy number we've got there, times m1 times m2 divided by r squared. So my g is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newton times meters squared per kilogram squared. And let me just actually put the per kilogram squared on the bottom of my fraction, because that's really what it means, so per kilogram squared. This now has to be multiplied by mass 1, which is 3 kilograms, by mass 2, which is 5 kilograms. And my kilogram squared on the bottom has to be multiplied by my radius squared, so that is 7 meters squared. And just so we see that our units will actually cancel, I have kilogram squared on the bottom and 2 separate kilograms multiplied on the top. I have meters squared on the top and my meters on the bottom inside the brackets would get squared as well. So all I'm going to be left with is this newtons, which is perfect because I like force to be measured in newtons. And if you do that on your calculator, you should get that that's equal to 1.43 times 10 to the minus 10 newtons. So that's an extremely tiny number, but that makes sense. These are small masses. I would not be able to notice their gravitational attraction to each other. So there's a very small force of gravity between them. Now, without doing any more in-depth calculations, I want to go over some concepts that you might encounter in other problems as well. So for example, you might get situations where you have more than two masses. So let's say this is m1. We might have an m2 over here, and maybe an m3 over here. So each of these are going to have a separate radius uh, separating them. I guess we could call them radius 1 and radius 2. And you might be asked for the net gravitational force on one or the other of these masses. And you just have to basically look at the situation as being separate forces. We could draw a free body diagram for any one of these masses and show that it is being attracted to other masses. 
to both other masses. And we know that radius makes a bigger difference than the size of the masses, so probably this force is actually going to be the bigger one in this case, but of course without having any numbers we don't know. We could use the Pythagorean theorem with our radiuses that were given to find the angle between these forces if we were asked to do so. And we could do a similar thing on any one of the other masses as well. So any mass we can look at all the forces that are acting on it, all the forces of gravity, and we just use our formula for force of gravity multiple times to find the combination of those forces. The final situation I want to mention is a situation with satellites in orbit around the Earth. So let's suppose this is the Earth, and up here we've got a satellite in orbit. If you're interested in the gravitational attraction between the satellite and the Earth, you may be perhaps given the altitude. But remember that the altitude measures only from the surface of the Earth, and our radius, as it's called, or distance, according to the law of universal gravitation, goes not from the surfaces, but from the centers of mass. So you have to keep in mind that you should be measuring this all the way to the center of the Earth as the radius. So you might need to know the radius of the Earth or find that information somewhere to add to your altitude in order to know the orbital radius of that satellite. So I hope that helps you solve some problems about gravity, about this sort of mysterious force that acts at a distance and has the funny property that it's attached only to masses.